Yes, so the question is, is this house typical? This would have put the Washingtons in the top 6% of Virginians. So we have, there's a great article by Camille Wells, who's an architectural historian, um, and she's fabulous. Um, she looks at all the ads in the Virginia Gazette. She looks at various probate inventories. This would have put the Washingtons in the top 6%. So to our 20th century eyes, this might not look very large, but the Washingtons are doing better than 95% of Virginians. Most Virginians are living in a one or two room wooden structure. So they're not as doing as well as the Carters say, uh, or the Fairfaxes. The Fairfaxes are aristocracy. They're literally aristocracy, but this would have been a very fine home. It would have had three chimneys and all these landscape cues, a large house on a terrace overlooking the river, all these outbuildings, the neat landscape that the family presented were all cues that other colonial people would have been able to interpret that this was a wealthy and successful family. And in the Virginia Gazette, we see that they refer to this as Mrs. Washington's Ferry two times. So the wash, this house, this was a landmark for colonials and not they're not calling it George Washington's Ferry. They're calling it Mrs. Washington. So um, this is a place that would have been a landmark. And in Virginia at that time, you know, there are a few places, there are a few taverns where you can stay. Um, but if you had a house with at least two chimneys and this one had three, you were expected if someone came knocking and needed a place to stay, you were if you had the provisions, you were supposed to open that door and make people feel welcome and, and, and welcome them to your home. So between King's Highway, the ferry, and this is the fall line of the Rappahannock River, that is you can't go any higher up the Rappahannock without hitting the bottom in a ship. Um, this was a real nexus for colonial travelers and this would have been a landmark uh, for them to, to see and visit um, and enjoy. So when Washington left here, how old was he? He's 22 when he leaves here. And then he went to Pope's Creek? He went to Mount Vernon, Hunting Creek. Isn't What's the one out in the Westmoreland County? That's Pope's Creek. That's where he was born. So he oh, lives wow. okay. in Westmoreland County till the age of three. From three to then six. He came here. From three to six, they go to Hunting Creek, later to be known as Mount Vernon. And then they move from Mount Vernon here. So 1738, George leaves here early in 1754 permanently, but this is his postal address um, from 1738 to 1754. Um, and so then he leases Mount Vernon from his sister-in-law. Um, and then when his sister-in-law dies without any surviving children, um, the house Mount Vernon reverts to George. So he had his eyes set on Mount Vernon for a long time, but first he rents it from his sister-in-law before he inherits it outright. Good question. That's that's not a history that's known by a lot of people. A lot of people assume he's born here, or he's born at Mount Vernon, or he's always at Mount Vernon. So.